Outrocast. Ryan, congratulations on the documentary, the single, etc. How's your day going aside from answering the same questions over and over and over again? It's going well. I'm back in Nashville. I'm at my house right now, uh, talking to a whole bunch of people, getting ready to launch this single, Center Field. Hell of a single, one that if you've gone to a baseball game, you've heard it every single time you've gone to a baseball game. But on your end, when did the baseball start versus the musicianship? They both, I mean, I've been doing both for a while. Um, I've been throwing a ball around. I would toss a ball in the driveway with my dad ever since I can remember, probably five or six years old. Uh, I had this tiny little guitar, little kid's guitar that I would just play. I didn't know how to play any chords at all. I just play and sing whatever I could possibly think of as a kid. So we've been we've been doing both of them for a while and still going. There's a big overlap that not everybody realizes. I remember as a kid when Garth Brooks went to spring training and mm-hmm. you'd see Eddie Vedder all the time at club uh, Cubs games. And I think all the Pearl Jam people are somehow on Bronson Arroyo's album, et cetera. Yeah. When did you first start to notice the baseball rock slash country overlap? I mean, anytime you go to the ballpark, you just open your ears and I'm a music guy, so I'm always always paying attention no matter what environment I'm in, yeah. what's playing. Um, but ballpark country is like a very specific brand of country. And it's rocking, yeah. it's upbeat, it's anything that's that you can blast. It's a mixture of of country and, and Bon Jovi and, and Aerosmith and Yes. Okay, I have to interrupt you right there. That's what I was gonna ask because Aside from the vocals, ballpark country sounds like great 80s metal to me in a great way. And when I had the pleasure of interviewing Jason Aldean, I was kind of going, admit it, you're a Van Halen guy. You're you like the country production, but you're a hair metal guy. And the answer was yes. And I'm finding that every single country person is really just an 80s rock person in disguise. So that's the vibe I got with you, Brian. I mean, can you tell? Look at this. Look at the hair. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, I don't know. I grew up on everything from Aerosmith, Queen, early Tim McGraw, Kenny Chesney, Garth. Like, and who am I as an artist? I'm like a kind of a combination of all those people. Not necessarily super similar to any one of them, but but definitely influenced by them. And you know, I'm and John Fogarty is is in that list. And and mm-hmm. Center Field is a song that that I've heard every day at the ballpark and it's, it's like a ballpark staple. And yeah. I, I love the song. I, I love his music and I love CCR and, and, you know, it's, I've been releasing original singles. Um, I've put out uh, five or six of them so far and and many more on the way, but this was like a, a fun moment. I, I was in the studio with my producer Smith Curry and we were doing a song that I wrote called left field, which was my debut single um and he was like you know you should do left field and center field and it was he was just joking and everybody had a laugh and and then we all sat down and we're like wait a second maybe we should (laughs) it's uh you know my version is is uh very much honors everything that john fogarty did but i put my own personal spin on it it's more upbeat more rocking Mm -hmm. and we changed we had a key change at the end i mean we we threw in some things i think we had like three or four different guitars on there. Like we, we tried to, to make it really original for me and something that would feel like, like a Brian Ruby song versus a John Fogarty song. And, yeah. and so, you know, I, we haven't, I don't know if he's heard it yet. Um, we're trying to, to get it to him. I, I would love to hear what he thinks, but you know, I didn't want to step on his toes. I just kind of wanted to honor him, honor the song, honor the last two decades that I've been spent spending in baseball Mm -hmm. and going to the ballpark every day. Uh, Now that I'm more of a musician versus a baseball player transitioning over to, to being a full-time artist, but that was the deal with the song. And I I hope people like it. Well, we're going to come back to the job titles in a second there, but free advice. If you want to get anything to John Fogarty, one Concord music group, because they handle a lot of his overall catalog stuff Two, his wife, Julie is his manager. So, Mm -hmm get it out there to Mr. Fogarty. But over to you here, as you pointed out, baseball player, journeyman who played on a lot of teams for a long time, Mm -hmm. musician, 
subject of a documentary, community outreach, having your own nonprofit, et cetera. How do you like to be thought of or described? I mean, <laughs> you covered a lot there. Honestly, just like to be thought of as a good guy who who's proud of who I am. Like, um, you know, I'm a ball player. I'm a country music singer. I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community, mm -hmm. a nonprofit, proud to be in baseball that helps, supports and encourages the next generation of LGBTQ athletes in my sport. So something yeah. that I wish I could have had as a kid, but I didn't have, needed it, but I didn't have support. So now, you know, now that I'm on the flip side of, of everything and, and um, I'm, I wanted to build the thing that could help other people like me. So and right. then just singing songs, songs that, that I wish I could have heard somebody like me sing as a kid, you know, it's, it's like an inclusive supportive message and, and just trying to really just be true to who I am, live my best life like just like anybody else and and be thought of as a good guy honestly it's nothing super complicated but um <laughs> that's that's it <laughs> yeah well you make a very good point there when you talk about how there weren't necessarily role models in your situation in baseball but the same thing with music you know when rob halford from judas priest came out it was a shock to so many people and that was the late 90s and the last couple of years we've seen it turn out that half of the singers are part of the lgbt plus via i don't know yeah, yeah. officials but they're part of the community and or allies to the community so in other words now it's totally normal to be accepting yet it wasn't 20 years ago when did you yeah. start to see the tide turn that you could just be yourself yeah um when did i see it i mean i i think it's been a gradual thing people have been fighting for this for decades you know there's there was an old baseball player when did i see it in baseball um an old baseball player who played in like the 80s uh the 70s late 70s early 80s glenn burke um who who came out after he retired you know he's been he was really like the first person to talk about this in baseball um and people have been have yeah. been you and and hopefully many more um in every industry like um you know as the years go by and people see that it's okay to do whatever you love and to be part of the community you know it's it's uh in baseball i say baseball is america's pastime and we're way past time to have more lgbt representation like it's well said. it's uh it's possible it's 2023 like whether that's baseball country music and i think you know, the more that we, what I preach when I go talk to different groups and go to schools and everything and, and give my speech is, is just that people need to see that being LGBT is, is as normal as anything else, yeah. you know, and you can, and, um, like LGBTQ people are baseball fans who sing yeah. songs like center field too. Right. Like it's that's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's part of the I mean, that's the, part of the reason why we're doing this song. Like it's I'm legit a fan of the song. And, and you know, it's I think it's even more powerful that um, people can hear like the young baseball fans, young kids can hear somebody like me singing it. Well, to sum up what you just said there, music is a universal language. Baseball is a universal language. Now, sure, the rules in Japan are a little different, but yeah, right. uh, baseball is pretty much 80 to 90 percent the same everywhere, I, except when you go to a Mexican baseball game and between every pitch they're playing music. That was a shock to me that I learned last year when I was in Mastala, Mexico. Did you play uh, in uh, Mexico in any of those leagues in your journeyman days? So I played in Guatemala City for a team called Los Lobos, the Wolves. <laughs> in the Guatemala professional baseball winter league. And I also played in Chile and Peru down there. Never got to Mexico. I've been to Mexico uh, for other reasons, for, for uh, touristy reasons, but uh, never as a ball player, but been, you know, every brand of baseball is like different, like, especially in Latin America, it's like more energetic, loud noisemakers at the field and fans going crazy and, and, 
And uh, one of the coolest things that I've observed down there, not to get too off to off topic, but um, they love like big arena rock down there. Yeah. Like rock and Rio, like the giant shows. Um, and so that's, that's like fed as, as another part of my soul, my more rock part of my soul to go down there playing ball and they're playing all this music. And, um, but it's a, it's a very, uh, re very different experience than up here, but it's, it's a cool one too. Yeah. As I said, in Mexico, between every pitch, the music comes up, which was yeah interesting to say the least, but, uh, two quick questions and then I'll let you go. And the first one is, a lot of prominent authors in the 90s, like Stephen King and Dave Barry and all that, they had a band where it was kind of a, a personal project, but all these authors had a rock band and they were touring around. Putting that to you, do you think that we'll ever see a tour of you and other baseball players hitting the road? <laughs> don't rule it out. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, Barry Zito. Is a is a great musician. Bronson Paul O'Neill, Bernie Williams, Bernie Williams, Jake Peavy. Like you got you got guys. I mean, I think there's a couple guys on the Savannah Bananas who play different instruments. Like uh, I don't know if you've seen them on TikTok. They're pretty popular. Um, I won't rule it out. Let's just say that. Okay, so that gives hope for you doing a, a stadium tour. Because <laughs> think about it you and a couple of players, they wouldn't be able to turn you away from playing stadiums. Then you could tell everyone you're a stadium level country artist. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. And uh, the last question, what are you watching on TV these days? Any recommendations you could pass along? What am I watching? I just watched a great movie, uh, you know, uh, called Red, White and Royal Blue on Amazon mm -hmm. Prime. Uh, it's a love story, a story I wish I could have seen as a kid. Um, that's, that's what I, I just watched this past weekend. I'm looking forward to watching the new season of Heartstopper as well on Netflix. But um, go. yeah, always open to suggestions if you got anything else. Uh, did you ever see the baseball show with Hank Azaria where he plays the disgraced baseball announcer? Hank, uh, what's the name of the show? Uh, Brockmire. It was on IFC. Uh -huh. And he basically was a major league baseball announcer that has one game where he finds out his wife is cheating on him and gets loaded on the air. It gives a pretty I think I ass. saw that on TikTok. I think I saw that that, that the guy freaks out that uh man. So he has to go it. back to the minors to work his way up in, in baseball. And yeah. it's one of these shows where the final season was made before COVID, but it predicted COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a brilliant show that has about 10% to do with baseball and 90% due to, uh, to deal with a great character. So Brock, yeah. Meyer, if you Brock, Brock Meyer, I got another suggestion for you. You can maybe, Please. maybe you can cut this in. Um, another documentary that I love is called the battered bastards of baseball. Oh, it's on Netflix. And it's all about like, if you want to know about me, like um, watch the battered bastards of baseball. I'm not in it, but that is basically my life playing with these journeyman baseball guys on the road. It's a little, little bit of shenanigans and, uh, but it's all in, in good fun and it's, it's family entertainment and, you know, people just trying to get, get people in the stands and, and come to these baseball games. We don't quite have the luxury of being, um, major leaguers making millions of dollars and playing in Yankee stadium. So we're playing in, in independent league, minor league baseball. So, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's a whole lot of shenanigans and the, the documentary is, is uh, really, really interesting. Really that, fun. Sound, that sounds like a thing that Bill Murray did before COVID him and his brother just going around to minor league baseball stadiums. And it was on a Facebook, it was a Facebook series, but now yep. we like Facebook was never a TV channel, but it was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'll have to check that one out. But Brian, hey, thank you for the great music. Looking forward to what's to come from you as an advocate, as a musician, as a baseball community person, whatever it is, just keep up all the greatness there. Thank you. Center Field drops August 25th, Friday. Thanks for having me. Outro cast.